She was pushed down by all this uh, one chance. The last moment of 33-year-old great nest Tululokwe, Oloron Femi, as she battled for her life after she was thrown off a moving vehicle by one chance vehicle syndicates that robbed passengers along Abuja Expressways. This video is an antithesis to the lively and ambitious woman that greatness was. It was on Tuesday, September 27th, last week that greatness who was returning from the bank was said to have taken a commercial cab from the ministry of justice junction in abuja city center but never got home alive as she was stabbed and thrown out of a moving vehicle along the Maitama Kubwa Highway. Reports say Greatness was found alive by good Nigerians and rushed to the Maitama District Hospital, which allegedly abandoned her after insisting on getting a police report before treatment, as this social media video suggests. Uh, we are just in uh, Metama General Hospital. Fortunately, we call one of the uh, nurses we just met here. She said they cannot attend to her. They have their reason. We go to the Maitama District Hospital to get to hear their own side of the story, but the hospital security would not let us in. The Maitama District Hospital, just across the road. This hospital still brings tears to the family of the late greatness Olorun Femi. We tried to launch our investigation some uh, what further into the hospital, but security men would not allow the media in, saying that they are not allowed uh, to let the media in to make any further interviews or even take shorts. When Arise News requested a CCTV footage, the hospital's management referred our crew to higher authorities, saying that the hospital's position remains that the deceased's greatness was brought in dead. Instead of them to quickly rush this woman and save her life, they are saying there are procedure and process. While some Abuja residents blame her death on poor health care services, the police insist that the law on the provision of a police report before hospitals attend to criminal and accident victims has been amended and the hospital should have provided prompt medical attention to the deceased. If you see somebody, even with bullet wound, what you need to do is accept him in your hospital and alert the police. Her friend and roommate recounts the tale of Miss Oloron Femi's death. A friend assisted her to a uh, guarantee trust bank in Jabi and dropped her in front of the bank and said she, he saw her actually going into the bank. Then he went his way. Um, on getting home, it was raining heavily that day, so I assumed she was sleeping. I, I banged the door to her room. She didn't answer, so I, uh, I assumed she was deep asleep. I didn't want to disturb her, so I just went into my own room to actually sleep. The next morning, I left for work very early. I had to get to the bank. On coming out of the bank, I started seeing missed calls from people that we both attend Ignite the United States Ministry together. On getting, um, on picking my phone, I saw a message, pick up is very urgent. So I got a call from someone that said, oh, do you have greatness that is um, parents or next of kin number? And I was like, no, I didn't have the number. And I was like, what happened? They said, oh, she had an accident. She was in the hospital. So on getting to work, I kept on calling back, okay, Alpha, what's wrong? What's the person? I said, oh, the situation is critical. She, she was in a critical situation. They didn't actually want to tell me that because of our closings and what they knew that we're friends and we're also housemates. They didn't want to tell me that she was actually dead. She continues to hold the Maitama District Hospital culpable. We found out that the report said she came in, she was brought in dead and... Um, even after she died, the doctors and nurses on duty even didn't want to collect her corpse. And they had to go, they had a back and forth till around 1 a.m. before they finally kept her in the morgue because they kept on saying they didn't have space for her body. Um, but pro after that, we got different videos and voice notes from the person that actually assisted her, the Good Samaritan, that said greatness was brought in her life, she was breathing. He went into the emergency room and the nurse and doctor on duty said they can't touch her until he goes and gets a police report or if there's a family member. And he told them 
specifically that he didn't know her personally. He was only assisting her. He also made videos with his phone to show that they slammed the door on him and locked the emergency room door, and which they were there with some other people for some minutes. Then when he, f he found that she was not a guy he went back in to go and cover them. And that was when the doctor and the nurse followed him out and checked her body. But even with that, she was still left in his car after they found out that she was dead. And they went in and wrote a report that she died, she was brought in dead. This elderly cleric is Greatness's father. He can't contend with the sorrow that himself and his family have been thrown into by this sad and untimely death of his daughter. It was the beginning of my strength. My firstborn, my first daughter. My longest last discussion with her was on Saturday, 23rd of September, by 4 p.m., in a conference call with two friends from the United States of America, in respect of ambition to further education in 2024. There and then, she delivered a provide, and a decision was made that she will commence a PhD in microbiology, July 2024. We ended the meeting with excitement, and that by Monday, 25th of September, she began to supply necessary conditions, documents to facilitate the relocation. I remember on Monday, 25th of September. I had a dream. And I saw a pit around the family. I summoned the family members for prayer meeting by 10 p.m. online, including greatness. And we prayed to avert the evil that was pending. Not knowing that, it would be irreversible. Her Instagram handle suggests she went on a break from social media months back. Was someone after Greatness's life? As our investigations continue, we found an eyewitness and victim of the same one chance vehicle that Greatness boarded. We entered the vehicle. I just noticed that the door was not properly locked. So Greatness wanted to lock the door properly. So she was immediately we she turned. She now noticed that there is no handle to close the door properly. By the time she was, we were turning to tell the driver that there is no there is no uh, an opener to open the vehicle. We just noticed that they have wind up the glass. The next thing we saw is a gun on our head. The one in the front brought out the big gun, and the one in the, and they cocked the gun, facing us. They started hitting us, battering us. It was. She says greatness was thrown off the moving vehicle and overran by the one chance syndicates. We're just begging, pleading for our life. At a point, I was just calm sitting down in one place. They collected my bag, collected my phone, um, the valuable things with him that I work with. They collected everything. Then they faced the girl. Collect, they, they, and they faced greatness. They started beating her, collected her ATM, collected her phone, even her bag, collected everything. The girl was begging. Then at a point, I think maybe there was no money in her ATM or they have swiped everything inside. I just noticed that they collected an ATM, they collected mine too. They asked for my PIN for my ATM. That is it, is it my money I want all my life? I told them the PIN to my ATM. Then they asked the girl too. She did the same thing. So they attended to her first, as in they were beating. The, the beating was now more on her than me after because she was shouting. At a point, I just kept quiet, I was mute. They checked my bag, they saw defense ID card and police ID card. To them, they thought I'm a policewoman. Started searching on my body if there is a hidden weapon on me or a tracker. 
I told them I'm in journalist because as um, because I cover defense, I cover I cover defense and police. I have their ID card. So they didn't even believe me. They were just beating me and all that. So after a while, they now started driving around the whole of the town looking for more victim. Then when we got to this uh, Maitama bridge that linked to Sectariat, as if you're going to Kobwa, they just slowed down a bit. It's not as if full slow down, slow down a bit. Now open the door. The guy beside me now came to the middle between me and greatness. He now opened the door for greatness, now pushed her out. So the girl was now trying to find a balance, as in, so that she could... No, no, she, she was trying to... When they pushed her out, she was trying to find a balance, so she was holding the door, the door to the vehicle. They now used the door to hit her head. Come on, leave this door, leave this door. You know, she was trying to find her feet. Before he could know it, he just ran over the girl. We find the exact spot where the deceased 33-year-old greatness or Lauren Femi was actually thrown off the moving vehicle by a syndicate of the One Chance. Now, this was actually after they had inflicted a lot of bodily injury on her. Without argument, this case, as it is being investigated, is one case that is generating a lot of public interest and controversy, with the Minister uh, for the FCT, Barrister Nyesom Weeker, assuring FCT residents that the death of greatness or Lauren Femi would not be swept under the carpet. The process of appointing and constituting the panel to investigate the death of late Ms. Greatness or Lauren Femi is crucial in ensuring that the, in this investigation, the outcome serves multiple purposes. One, it can provide closure to the patient's family, the duration for the investigation and submission of this report is one week. The panel to probe her death comprised the Nigerian Medical Association, NMA, National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives, Association of Resident Doctors and others. Until her death, Ms. Oloran Femi was the Assistant Secretary and Public Relations Officer of the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, CIPM Abuja Chapter. She was also a member of the Young African Leaders Initiative, YALI Network. As interested parties in this case are called to give account of their actions, many questions come to mind, even as many Abuja residents seek justice for the family of the deceased. Mary Chinda, Arise News.